Footwork's the most important thing in fighting. Even boxing, even though you punch with your hands, a good fighter is all from the legs. Punching power is from the legs. Your ability to defend yourself is from the legs. It's all legs. It's all about how you move. If you have good legs, good footwork, if you move well, like, like Floyd, he doesn't get hit. That's not because of his head moving, it's because of his body, his feet. Punching power is all leg related. Getting your technique right is gonna improve your punching power far more than like training, physical strength. Does that make sense? I'm gonna teach you how to box in 10 minutes. You've got two weapons, you're right-handed. You got, you got a sniper rifle and you got a machine gun. Machine gun, you can miss sometimes. Sniper rifle, you got hit. The difference between a machine gun and a sniper rifle is the reload time, right? A machine gun, you can miss because you can just quickly reload it. Sniper rifle, you got fucking bolt action, all this bolts. Exactly the same thing. Every single, every single weapon has a reload time. So when you're fighting as a professional, the reason I don't just go in there and start swinging is because if I miss, there's a huge reload time and I'm gonna get hurt, right? So your quickest weapon that has the lowest, the lowest reload time is jab, it's gonna be your left hand. So a boxing stance is left foot forward, right foot back. The heels of your feet shouldn't touch the ground. Your front heel can sometimes, but in general, perfect technique, your heels don't touch the ground. It's all in the balls of your feet. So it's like calf activation. When I was training, he put, ink on our heels if you, and if you saw ink on the mat we all got fucked so heel can't touch the mat for hours because when your heels are off the mat you're the most springy you're the most bouncy you can move quick right your right hand is going to go up and it's going to guard your chin your left hand is going to be out a little bit a little bit more forward and the very basic premise of boxing is find him with your jab and as soon as you find him you throw a power shot that's boxing very simple version Look. Now there's a thousand different little technical, technical <laughs> changes we can make for, to make that better, but that's the basis of boxing. And the idea is, if you can't hit him with your fastest weapon, you're probably not gonna hit him with your slower weapon, right? So it's jabs, catch him, and when you, hit him with the, when you catch him with the jab, all right. So that's what we're gonna work on first. You feel it land, throw the power. Back you got a gum shield in already? I'm ready. <laughs> Try and catch me with the jab, jab me. Good, as soon as that touches, as soon as that touches, yep. as it goes back, the right hand comes out. Boom. Twist at the end. Why the twi twist? To increase your punching power. There's a difference between an amateur and a professional. A bullet is so deadly, not because of the amount of pressure it has, but because it's such a small surface. If you reduce the sur surface area, you increase the pressure. So what most people do when they throw a punch, they don't think about how their hand lands. So, stay still. If I land with the flat of my hand, or if I land with one knuckle, you feel the difference. It's yeah. the same amount of force but it's concentrated, you see? Mm -hmm. So if you whack, whoosh, and it's one knuckle, it snaps the bone. And that's why you twist, because it aligns your knuckle, it aligns your knuckle better. If you keep it straight, it's gonna be the flat of your hand. That, that's a massive difference. It's massive, people don't know. People don't realize it, do you think? But that's how people get cut. That's how they scratch your orbitals, because they catch one good bang with the knuckle, and it just snaps. The bone breaks. It's too much force concentrated in a small area. So if I'm punching, let's say, at 1,000, 100 miles an hour, let's say, I'm gonna do more damage if that lands in the smallest area possible, like a bullet. Mm -hmm. So that's why you twist, you wanna get your knuckle in. And even with the glove on, you can feel it. I can feel with my glove on, if I land knuckle, I can, I can feel his face snap through the glove. So you wanna really twist the knuckle into his bones. So the mic's about fuck. to fuck me up. I have no idea. And you wanna land with the, this knuckle in the middle if possible, that's it. These two can break, this one won't break. So you jab, if you miss, bring it back. Don't go. Leave it out here because you're going to be open for a right hand. See? Mm -hmm. See the right hand can come over the top? Yeah. Bang. Jab, if you miss, back. If you touch, as soon as it comes back, right hand forward. Mike's going to beat me up. Should I be wearing a gum shield? Why not? Pull on it. He's going to. Well, I've got all my hands. You hit me. You missed. You've got to catch me. You've got to catch me. It's like a chicken with Rocky. You ever seen Rocky where he has to chase the chicken? It's the same game. Boom, there was the right hand. So you missed. You didn't talk. You landed. Yeah. It was the right hand. So you touch it always follow. You gotta train your brain. That if this touches something, that follows. Because mm. if you touch me with this, you know where I am. And you know I'm there. And you know that's me. And this is gonna be longer than your jab. This is gonna be all the way long, like this. And you're gonna pivot, twist on your foot. Boom. All the way through. If your jab misses, you don't wanna throw that because it's gonna be open for counters. If you land the jab, whack. Good. 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 Right, now we're on the hooks. There's two kinds of hooks. You can hook like this, which is all about the knuckle, like we talked about. So there's less physical power, because the way your arm works. Doesn't have as much force, but your knuckle lands better. Mm -hmm. Or you can hook like this, which is more physical force, 
but it's harder to get the knuckle in. So that's more personal preference. You're probably gonna like to hook like this, it's more natural. Grab, cross, left hook. Boom. You see how they all load each other? This loads this. This loads this. Make sure to keep your right hand up when you hook because the number one counter for a left hook is a left hook. If you hook me, hook me hard. That's how we're trained. <laughs> so it's like as soon as I feel it, we throw. So keep your hand up. Nice. That right hand up. Oh, good, good, you're good. going. Good, good. Again. Good. Your right hand up. Nice. Right. Now we're gonna work on your defense. Yes, it's shit. If my number one weapon is a jab, you have to learn to negate the jab. You negate a jab by parrying. So people who don't fight have this idea that you just keep your gloves up to protect yourself. But the problem is, is that that doesn't work. Because if you cover up with your gloves, cover up, like uh, cover your face, right? If I, if I punch, not even, if I punch 20%, right? If I'm actually going, like, it's, your, your, your face will be a mess. So the idea that you just cover up doesn't work because if I'm landing knuckle, I'll break all the bones in your hand. Your glove will go into your own head. You can't just stack and stay there. You can't against someone who can't fight. Against someone who's big who can punch, you're gonna get fucked up just the same. You have to move. You have to like move with it. Even if you block, you have to like roll with the punch to take the power away from it. So with the jab, you don't just wanna let it hit you. You wanna parry it. And we parry it with our rear hand. So, we got fighting stance. Jab me, slowly, at my face. Anything, whenever I say anything, yeah, punch for real. Good, okay, again. Jab again. Good, okay, again. I don't block with my front hand, because look how it leaves me open for your right, over the top. So I block with my back hand. So my, my, my power hand, I block. So jab, I tap it. It's a tap. No power, no force, tap. A tap is enough to take it off course. The reason I don't do a big correction, jab, if I do a big correction, you can probably get a hook round faster than I get my hand back. Yeah. So I just want to tap it out of the way. So jab me in the face. Jab me in the face. Jab me in the face. Good. Again. Good. Again. Again. Jab me. That's it. Just tap it. That's how I stop. And we're taught in boxing school, as soon as I block that jab, to jab back. Right? Weird. With this. So jab me. Boom. Again. Boom. Again. Or I'll hook. Again. Body, whatever, so bang, 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 bang. That's how we're talking, right? So you're gonna block the jab with this hand. Put your gum shield. No gum shield. Perfect. Well, Mike look good with one tooth missing. We're about to find out. You're gonna have to punch at 5%. <laughs> You'll be right, don't worry. I don't miss. <laughs> right, so. <laughs> so when I jab you, so fighting stance, relax. Keep that hand there, if I sit that hand there, block with that one. Tap, that's it. Tiniest, less is more. Tiniest tap. Tap, it's too much. Your arms moving all the way down here. Tap. Boom, that's it. Good. 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 When you got it in front of your face, keep it, keep it here. Because if you put it in front of your face, like if it's here, it's if it's, well, if it's here, I fake a jab and I hook. Because as you get better, people start doing fakes and doubles, all this bullshit. Good. 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 Now, as soon as you block, jab me back. You hit me. You can hit me in the face. I'll come and punch you. I'm going to get punched for 15 years. It doesn't bother me anymore. I'm used to it. My nose has been popped. It's fine. Good. 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 Now, we're going to add another little thing to it. The reason I want to come at you is, jab, if I do this, you can't attack your arms in the way. You can't throw a hard punch with this. Your own arm's in the way. You understand? Mm -hmm. But I, get, I can counter here. Oh, yeah. I can counter here. I can counter here. So I want to be as close. I want to use my inertia and my weight to come forward to increase the power of my punch. You understand? So when you block the jab, you come at them. So if we were fighting for real, we'd be here. And when you jab me, jab me in the face for real. Jab me in the face for real. Hard, fast, good, jab me, jab me, good. Okay, and go. That's when, I, that's when I come at you. So you block and come forward. Does that make sense? So now when you block the jab, come at me. Beat me up. And you can either throw a jab back or you can throw a left hook as well. Left hook's another one. And then we'll do body punches and then you're not a box and then you're a professional. But we'll chance. He's, he's a good coach though. Like, I'm learning quick. Sense? I'm learning quick though. If you know why you're doing it, it makes more sense. Yeah. A lot of boxers just say, do this, do this, but now explain why this should be done that way. So, slowly I jab, 
Come forward and jab. Perfect. Good. 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 Everyone knows hitting in the head. Every punch you can throw to the head, you can throw to the body. Same. You can throw right hooks to the body, but they're a lot less effective than left hooks. Because you're hurting. So if I do it with a little bit of force, the left probably hurts more mm -hmm. than the right. So the left body hook is like the knockout, it's the turn off button. It's probably the, my favorite punch. Every fighter who fights long enough knows it's much worse to get hit here than to get hit in the face. If you eat one of these, don't move, you're hard. If you eat one of them properly, Takes, it's like money in the bank. You hit in the I first like, round and you feel it in round five. It just fucking hurts forever. Is, is, it's the, like a is the opponent tensive well, when they get hit? Or is there sometimes you'll get them and they're not even tensive? Exactly, and then they're really fucked. Yeah. So if they know it's coming, they can prepare. But if you catch them like on a counter or you catch them when they're breathing in or something, it's over. So left body hook is, is the number one primary body punch. Is that, I've been rocked in the face before, so I know what that feels like, but I'm not being properly. I'm not saying I want it. <laughs> But I'm, I, I can't imagine what that feels like. Uh, again, don't. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I have plans for the rest of this afternoon. Yeah. So that's the left body hook. Then the jab, just like you can do the face, you can do the body, and you aim right here, just below, just on the sternum. If I jab your body, I, I jab to the sternum. So what, if you were fighting and I was pro, I'd jab your head, jab your head, and then come in here, right? And you got the body hook, which is the same. So that's basically it. Those are the three most important body punches. You can do body crosses, but they're risky because they need to be very open. You see, uh, my face is very open to your opinion, so I wouldn't recommend them first. But that's it, so you can hit the head, you can hit the body. So now we're gonna spar. He knows how to box now. So now we're gonna fight. Nice. One, last, one last little little sparring session, and we're done. Yeah. Rules of sparring are, I'm not allowed to hurt you, I'm a professional. You're allowed to hurt me. If you knock me clean out now on camera for everyone, I deserve it. This is my life's work. So do not concern yourself with being polite, don't worry about hitting me too hard and me getting mad. I've done this my whole fucking life. And I'm not gonna get mad if you hit me, I don't give a fuck. So I want you to try your best, because if you're not trying, you're definitely not gonna You understand? Yeah. Punch me, beat me up, okay? You're gonna be interested. Beat me up, imagine it's for real and you hate me and it's on. Beat me up. Perfect, Perfect. two minute time. <laughs> beat me up, for real, for real, beat me up. Ready? Steady? All right, go. Tiring than it looks as well. Yeah. Fucking hell. I think the body shot and the bop right in the nose, I was like. <laughs> oh. You did good, man. You did good. You did good. I feel, I feel like every man needs to experience it's, it's, combat. It's a, yeah, it's an amazing thing. And also, like, although fight gyms are scary and intimidating from the outside, nearly all the time, they're the most down to earth people you can meet, man. No one's going to beat the shit out of you. It's kind of like your gym. If you walk in, the guy's really big. Is he a cunt or is he usually cool when you say, oh, can you help me with something? With it? They're probably like, oh, yeah, I'll help you with this or I'll, I'll, I'll spot for you, whatever. If you go to a fight gym, it's, you're not going to get the fuck kicked out of you. They're not like that. They're going to teach you little by little. And yeah, you'll learn through pain, but that's how life works. You learn through pain with everything, don't you? Yeah, you learn through pain with fucking heartbreak and fucking financial ruin and fighting and everything else. 
But yes, the best thing you can do as a man, absolutely. I, I, obviously, it was my life's work, so I love it very much. I still miss it, but it was good to go a few rounds with Iron Mike. <laughs> next, I, I'm gonna watch it back. Next time, like, you got go, next time you got a gum shield, we'll go for we'll go, go for real. Oh. Nice one, bro. You did good. You did good. When you when you hit me, like, I was also basically just like, yeah, yeah. And this is the reason fighting so hard. The reason fighting so hard is because it's nearly the only thing in the world where you have to reprogram your body's natural inclination. So if, if you take someone and teach them how to run, even though they don't know the technique to be the best sprinter, they already know basically how to run. You already basically know how to swim. You know how to like basically do it. But the human instinct on how to fight is actually completely wrong. You put your head up to look big, you lay or you swing low to get more power. Like everything you do, it, it's all, you have to reprogram your base instinct. And it's hard because you go back to the base instincts of getting hit and turning around because you got, because you got, skull so you think your skull will save you but it won't because like it's all these base things you have to reprogram and that's why it's so difficult you're reprogramming your base level instinct the way that every man thinks he should fight and we've evolved to fight doesn't work in professional fighting you have to reprogram you'll get rid of all that and reprogram with something else so me if i get caught on the nose my inclination is the first thing i will think is if he hit me in the nose he must be in front of me so the second i get taught tap i throw back so I don't think to turn around or anything. I'm like, the second I get touched, I'm attacking. Because I know that he has to be within attacking range. And that's why when you watch pros fight, there's so many combos, so many punches flying at once. Because they'll get hit and go, okay, he must be here, or he must be here. It's like an instinct you learn. It's, it's interesting, and it, it is scientific. Like, if you look at someone like Floyd, he's had an amazing career for so long, because he doesn't get hit. The art is not being a tough guy. The art is not getting hit. You don't need to be a tough guy. You need to knock it hit, knock it touched. And that's how you have a long, long career. I've had eight, seven fights, and my nose is, it looks that. good. It, it looks good. all right. No surgery. No surgery, nothing. My face ain't that bad for 87 fights. And I, and I have kicks and knees and everything. So.